Boys, I played Madden 25 early. Gridiron Notes just dropped about what you can expect from Madden 25, the latest installment of the game we love, boys. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button, man. I am a Madden champion, competitive gameplay guru. That's why you guys are here. That's why you guys listen. That's why you guys watch. Let's check out the Gridiron Notes, man. I am super excited for this year. We already talked about college football. Uh, I told you guys everything about that gameplay. I played that game as well. And... For note, I did play one game of Madden 25. I played Henry. We're 0-1 Madden 25 and Henry. I mean, I don't know. I tried to get him before he played the game and learned the meta and learned what was good. Apparently, they had already let him play a little bit more than me. You know, my first game was against Henry. He had, he had played a little bit. So did I get that, you know, fresh slate? Did I get that first game first? No, not really. I thought it was there. He was kind of tough, boys. But let's talk about it. Everything in the Gridiron Notes, I'll go over and compare to what I know from Madden 25 because I played it, boys. Uh, if you have any questions, please drop them below. All my links are also there. You guys can head on over to Twitter, Instagram, everywhere where I'll be dropping beta codes that just came out today as well. The beta is out. If you guys want to play it, it is available for you guys to play. Make sure you guys hit my social media up for the beta. Ask me any questions about the game. Let's take a look at the Gridiron Notes. Welcome to Madden 25. Blase, blase, blah. As you guys know, Christian McCaffrey's on the cover. Shout out Christian McCaffrey, man. Uh, listen, I don't really like to read all this. I like to get into the guts of this. I like to get into the guts of it. Pause. Gameplay. Listen, man. Everything that's good about college football gameplay is also in Madden. So we talked about the switch stick. We talked about the route stems. We talked about the quarterback pretty much having hot route master. So all that is in Madden. All right. All that carries over. I know people have been asking, is it going to carry over to Madden? Is the switch stick going to be Madden? Yes. So let's talk about what's also in Madden. Boom tech. Boom tech is actually a hit stick. Improving the hit stick, dude. In Madden 23, field sense. Now, I really don't know what that means. Uh, animated branching system and tackling has gotten better. I like the animations. We're not talking about an angry runs tackling boys. All right. We're not talking about that, but now they added boom tech to the field sense physics based tackling, man. And that means if, and when we played it and when they demonstrated it, when you're tackling, man, if you're hitting somebody on their left shoulder, they're going to go the other way and vice versa. They got a better chance of bouncing off where you try to hit stick. Somebody impacts the animation you're going to get or the success of that hit stick. You know, if you're going to hit them on the left shoulder, they might be able to bounce off to the right. Or if you hit them on the right shoulder, they might fly to the left. It really depends on the angle you take and the way you hit them with this new boom tech. And the hit sticks were awesome. I had a few questions about the hit stick. I actually asked, did the way football is going in general, where they're, they're, you know, care more about safety, less big hits, does that affect Madden at all? I thought at one point, maybe because, you know, they're really toning down big hits in real life, the NFL wouldn't want to represent big hit sticks, big devastating, you know, concussion-based tackles in their video game. But I was told it doesn't really matter. They haven't had any concerns over that. So the hit stick is still here better than ever this year. Uh, and at the end of the day, I asked, you know what? All the hit stick doesn't matter. None of it matters if they're not fumbling the football. If the strip button is still overpowered compared to the hit stick, nobody's going to care about boom tech. Nobody's going to care about physics-based tackling. Everybody's going to run around with their arm out trying to strip the ball. That's all. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Are we getting fumbles from our boom tech hit sticks? But it looks cool. It looks awesome. Uh, some of the running backs really bounce off hits. It's hard to hit. It's hard to hit stick. Remember, we were playing regs, so we're trying to hit stick with regular, you know, 48 hit power corners and stuff like that, man. So uh, definitely harder to hit stick, and we'll see when it comes to regs you got, or when it comes to mutt. As we play mutt now, everybody is 99 hit power, so it's definitely going to change depending on who you're trying to hit with. Reloaded, reloaded hit stick. This is the 20-year anniversary of the hit stick. You know what I'm saying ball carrier control. Now. We came from probably the most overpowered juke move in the history of Madden was this Madden 24. Outside of juke glitches or stiff arm glitches, this, I, I could argue, is the most overpowered move. The easiest move was this year's juke. It's what made RPOs even more deadly. One RPO and you're going to the crib because it's so hard to tackle. Um, that's, that's gone. The easy big juke, the juke, the, the OP juke is gone. There's no more of that. Um... I expressed the fact I thought the OP juke, me personally, 
I thought being able to juke everybody was good for the game. Now, okay, we're going to settle. We're going to talk about this for sure. One, everybody can do it. You can do it. I can do it. My son can do it. My wife can do it. My cousin can do it. My grandfather. Everybody can. Everybody can do the juke. And you say, oh, that's good. Everybody wants to get on the game and score touchdowns. Everybody wants to get on the game and go 99 yards, make a play with Barry Sanders, make a play with Adrian Peterson, make a play with all these great players that we have, both in Mutt and Regs. You want to be able to make game-changing plays with those players. you know. And for me, uh, it was a good thing. And people said, well, it's too easy. Everybody can do it. You're right, but not everybody can tackle in the open field. And I expressed literally in the presentation that I thought that was the skill gap in Madden 24 was being able to tackle, being able to click on, forcing uh, defenders to use their tackle and have some stick skill in the open field on the defensive side. But uh, the way it was presented to me is they kind of thought the opposite, where they they want the skill to be the juke moves. Now, there are new jukes in the game, everything like that. They're definitely not overpowered. And honestly, I didn't play the game long enough to learn how to do the great jukes. We all know that first week we don't know how to do the crazy glitchy moves or the reaper juke or the double juke or the double spin or anything like that. So it will take some getting used to these new jukes, but ultimately I think overpowered open field moves are good for the game, especially if you want to bring in boom tech to make them pay for juking in bad spots and stuff like that. I will say the spin moves a lot better. The spin move might be back. The spin move might be the go-to open field move like it was, I want to say, in Madden 22. And obviously years previous, man, the spin move really got kind of nerfed this year. But um, I think Madden 25 spin move will be the supreme open field move. And once again, much like college, the left stick's a little bit boom, 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 a little quicker. So sometimes you can just left stick juke. You don't even need to use the right stick and things like that. So all in all, I think not having an overpowered juke is kind of an L. But we'll see how it plays. I'm sure there's something we can do as far as juking in the open field. So that's how I felt about ball carrier control. Uh, and one of the things is it's great to be able to dump the ball off in the flat if they don't if they don't guard the flats and you can make a big play, you know. And that's that's some of the beauty of having great players to throw the ball in the flat with. Foundation football core gameplay is back with the newest iteration of field sense, get increased control across areas. I mean. Ball carrier for more dynamic, realistic gameplay. New playbooks capture the game's most innovative, explosive plays. Okay. This was another thing that kind of, I, you know, there, if there's one person I'm pissed at in Madden and EA in general, the playbooks have been nerfed to hell. Now, they showed this crazy montage of all these motion plays, the Mike McDaniel, Tyreek Hill in the backfield, auto motion plays that are never really good in Madden, never really viable in Madden, the auto motion plays. And the whole time I'm thinking, dude, I used to make plays like that by being able to motion snap, being able to motion people around wherever I wanted, not having to wait 20 minutes when I motion somebody for them to set at the line of scrimmage before I snap the ball. I used to be Mike McDaniel creating my own motion snap plays. Now you have removed that creativity to me, and now I have to forcefully do it with the auto motion plays that you put in the game. So for me, I wasn't a fan of you know all the new plays because I used to make those plays. I used to motion snap, and, and, and really the nerfing of the motion snaps, the, the motions in general, is what have made us all kind of stuck running bunch because, I mean, motion snaps were way more prominent in a trips tight end they were more prominent in wide trips they were more prominent in every other formation where you could space people out in motion snap maybe get a boost maybe get off the press that we're dealing with now and mud so for me them nerfing playbooks in general you know ha has hurt the game in the last couple years and for me adding motion or uh, auto motion plays like the miami dolphins run is not helping the playbook at all and it it's even more evident to me when I'm playing college or NCAA 14 lately, been playing a lot of revamped and the playbooks in that are insanely good. There's so many plays in NCAA 14 that have been removed in the past 10 years that just has forced us to be running double post bunch verticals over and over and over and over and over. So although they've made some create creative plays, you know, they're incorporating plays that are run every day on Sunday at the end of the day, I mean, nerfing all the other formations and all the other plays they've taken out, I think have hurt the game more than the new plays they've added from, you know, every day on Sunday. I mean, but they're really on top of 
Miami just ran this play last week. We can now put it in our live playbook the next week and things like that. So they're really cognizant of what's going on on NFL Sunday and then putting it into the game. Uh, that, I mean, that's – I mean, you guys, sim guys, and, you know, it wants to be real football. I, you'll like that a lot more. But I, I really want some of the old plays back and some of the old features as far as audibling, motioning, motion snapping, and things you can do creativity-wise uh, on the offensive side. But – that's that, that that was the biggest takeaway from, you know, the the foundation football and what it looks like, immersion and things like that. I I, I will tell you, I played I played with uh Henry played with the Bears and I played with Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts looks like Jalen Hurts. Everything about him, his mannerisms, that's what I mean by immersions, like the way he takes a snap, the way he audibles, it is Jalen Hurts to a T. Awesome. Uh, he did take a long ass time to do audibles and to do hot routes and to do slide protection. It was ob- actually obnoxious how long Jalen Hurts took at the line of scrimmage, but it it felt like J- I was playing with Jalen Hurts. It was super dope, uh, and and really, that was the immersion part of it for me. You guys know I'm a comp guy. As far as all this goes on, all the fireworks before the game, I don't think anybody sits and watches this outside of maybe the first time. And God bless them. I mean, they put so much work into all this stuff and how real it looks. And I was sitting there in the presentations about it, kind of disappointed that I don't enjoy this stuff. Like, I mean, I want to play the game, you know, and I don't know how you guys are. I mean, this stuff is cool. You watch it the first time. And maybe, once again, playing college football, getting into that immersion of your your fantasy or your dynasty or your franchise league, we're going to the playoffs Maybe, you know, maybe watching the intro is going to be a big deal. But, uh, you know, franchise overview. Now, let me know if you're a franchise guy out there. I will tell you, first and foremost, I've played CFM. I, listen, I think CFM is, is, is dope. I, I like a lot of it. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to read all this, all this stuff. The draft was the worst part of CFM. It was terrible to watch. It was terrible to view. It was terrible to see what's coming next, what your last draft pick was. The way they have overhauled franchise mode, the draft in particular, insanely good. The draft is going to be so much easier to watch. They have an actual draft board. You can see who picked five picks before you or five picks after you. You can anticipate what the team before you is going to pick because you can see their last couple picks. It's just so much better, and it was probably the worst part of CFM was the draft interface. The HUD, the interface, whatever was going on in the draft, your draft board, the league's draft board, previous picks was just nasty to keep uh, to be aware of, man. It was really tough. They have overhauled the draft. Now, all these other things, rookie records, team's record, all that stuff is cool. I, like, listen, at the end of the day, for me, I enjoyed... And crossplay and franchise will launch in Madden 25. That's a super dub. But I enjoyed franchise mode. I enjoyed improving my players. I enjoyed the progress of my team. Uh, the one thing I hated was the draft. And that was the number one thing they kind of pinpointed that the draft is going to be so much better in CFM this year. Excited about that for sure. Team builder. Total customization of your, your own team. You can make your own team. Uh, and I think it's... Uh, I don't know how much it's going to be online. I really wasn't sure. It didn't seem like a really online thing. Uh, customization in general, as far as creating, putting your logo on your team, uploading whatever logo you want. We're going to have the needed logo on an NFL team. That's going to be awesome. Uh, so you guys can all... Now, I always think about this and think about somebody just putting giant titties as their team logo. Not bad. You know, who complains? Not me. But that's really what MLB The Show was. So we'll see how people how people use it in Madden. Uh, desire customization team builder design your own team tools available on the team builder website upload your own logos personalize your uniform helmets field once created you can import your team to franchise and dominate the Super Bowl I don't know how much is gonna be online but offline is gonna be dope for sure presentation this was one of the best parts about Madden that I saw now so I'm at the the presentation for Madden or I'm at the Madden I guess you know the preview day for Madden and I, you guys don't know, I'm a huge Sixers fan, huge Philly sports fan. Uh, so I'm at, at the door. I'm filling out my little waiver. I'm getting my name tag. And here comes Kate Scott. Kate Scott is the play-by-play broadcaster for the Philadelphia 76ers. So I've been listening to her broadcast, Joel Embiid and the boys, for two years now. And she's been awesome. And I saw her walk in and talk. I said, 
what are you doing here? I introduced myself. I said, I'm a huge Sixers fan. Love your work, blah, blah, blah. But it turns out Madden is going to have huge new actual broadcast teams. More than one broadcast team. It's going to be, you can actually interchange by whatever broadcast team you want right here. New broadcast teams and commentary add to the most immersive audio experience in years. So there's there's different teams you can choose who you want to broadcast your game. You're not stuck with the same broadcasters. Now, you guys know me. I turn the broadcasters off because, one, I'm part of that broadcasting by talking. So it's hard to talk over a broadcast team. But uh, super excited for that. Uh, and you can actually put it on random, or if you like one one particular broadcast team, you can pick that one uh, individually. Here we go. Uh, boom, boom, boom. New pregame montages, Superstar Ultimate Team, Blase Blah, Pag Collision Grunts. So yeah, like I said, we got we got three different teams. Obviously, the one we've had for a while, Brandon Gawton and Charles Davis. But they're also going to have Mike Tirico and Greg Olson, who are like top-tier commentators in football now. Uh, Greg Olson is awesome. Uh, I, I think he's the best. And then we got, like I said, Kate Scott, who works for the Sixers, is going to do one with uh, former quarterback Brock Huard. And they're, they're, they're a duo as well. So you can put it on random, choose those three people, or you can pick which one you want. If you like Mike Tirico and Greg Olson, you pick them every time. But like I said, for me, I'm not a big commentary person, but to have the option of different commentary is the first time ever in Madden, and that's a massive W. Live game modes. Uh, there is Madden 25 mode for you. Last season edition, Crossplay made these modes even more accessible. Crossplay was a super dub for Madden. With the addition of Crossplay to Franchise, the top modes are now compatible in Madden 25. Um, like I said, Superstar, I really don't care about Superstar. It looked super cool, though. I mean, I don't really play it, boys. But like I said, I'll put the link to this whole Gridiron Notes down here so you guys can read the Superstar stuff. And most importantly, you can take your Road to Glory player and then go to Superstar on Madden. So if you're doing Road to Glory, you can then go to Madden, boom, and put them in here. Ultimate Team. Honestly, uh, I, I don't really know. This is what I want to talk, to, talk about the most, really. And then, so, like, we'll talk about this ranked mode that I'm super excited about. Uh, here we go. Online head-to-head. -head. All right, so that's about it. This is MVP bundle, all that good stuff. But let's talk about, one, I suggested this in the roundtable we had this year was solo seasons. You guys that don't want to play Sweats, you don't want to play me, you don't want to, like, run the meta, you don't want to play against Avalanche and Freight Train and Vanguard cool you can play the computer over and over and over unlimited much like much like mlb has uh mini seasons you can play solo seasons over and over against the computer work your way up through the difficulty get to the point where you're winning super bowls on all madden difficulty and earn coins earn rewards literally never having to play the meta never having to play sweats you can literally play the computer and i love that for everybody that doesn't want to get into the, doesn't want to sweat I, I love that you know that's such a good mode that, you know, if you don't want to play that stuff and you don't want to, you know, you want to play more sim, you want to play more relaxed and chill, there it is for you. Boom, right there. So, as far as I'm concerned, the amount of people complaining about meta and game is born, it's right there. You don't want to play that stuff, go chill, relax, play solo seasons. This separates a lot of people, puts a lot of people where they want to be, and, and that's fine. Love that for all you solo guys. There should never be a limit on how many solos you can play, how many coins you can earn, and right there, Solo Seasons is going to do that for you guys. Love it. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Six on six live events. Six on six would be awesome if it was six users versus six users. I, can we get to this, Madden? Like, can we figure out a way to make a co-op game mode that's fun? Can we figure this out? Uh, you know, the yard flopped. Superstar Knockout is kind of trash. I mean, squads is squads. It can be fun, but it could be better if we could take one of these six-on-six -six modes or the yard and just make it better. Put more effort into it and find a way to get, even if it's three-on-three -three with no with no computers. Nobody wants any AIs. We just want all users. Six-on-six -six could be done. I mean, 2K has had it for, what, 10 years now, boys. Let's figure it out. You know, and that's what makes 2K fun is getting on and playing with your boys. It's one of the biggest things that Madden lacks. And and they talked about this being something they want to do is have that like your boys playing with your boys that at that type of vibe, whether you're playing Fortnite or Call of Duty or anything like that, dropping in with the boys loading up. So for me, 
Uh, we got to find a way to make this six on six, which looks super cool. But we got to make this multiplayer, you know, at some point, something like that. If someone would come to me and say, how can we make a fun Madden game or a, a fun football game as co-op? It would be some type of six on six or seven on seven, especially with the way seven on seven is kind of booming right now in America. You know, and, it, and it's almost to the point where that's going to start taking over youth football. And it, it really has. I mean, youth football is really big seven on seven right now. And I think a video game of seven on seven or six on six will be. Big time, and I hope Madden takes that by the reins, honestly, because nobody can make a video game like EA. They've been at it for 40 years now, so let's just just be honest with that. Nobody's going to make a successful video game outside of EA. We're stuck with them, but it's a good company to be stuck with, and they've done a good job with this game over 40 years. So, all right. Oh, my God. This part, I, oh, my God. I almost I got hard in the little meeting with this one. In addition to new ways to compete, the Ultimate Team lineup screen has received a complete overhaul to further streamline the management of your roster. With tools like lineup improvement suggestions, drag and drop substitutions on the lineup screen that MLB has had for so long have now come to Madden. Instead of having to remove your strong safety to put another strong safety, then having to put him on backup, but he can't because he's starting another position, that's done. Drag him, drop him in the position you want. Madden has improved that 100%. I mean, team boost, forefront, like, just the fact you can move a player around now, thank God, what have we been waiting for? Period. All right. Online head-to-head, -head, the ranked mode, I wanted to tell you guys about this. Because this is another thing I suggested a long time ago. If you guys don't know, I'm a big Apex fan. I'm a big MLB fan. Obviously, I play those two, two other games that I play a lot. Um... And Madden did, never had a ranking system like that. And this year, they're going to have a ranking system where you move on up, much like Apex Predator. So if you guys watch that, what it means is everybody starts at, like, rookie. Then you move on to bronze, silver, gold, uh, platinum, diamond. And then you get to masters. You can get to Apex Predator, which is the top 700, I believe, for Apex. Madden is going to be the top 100. Now, you're going to play people at your skill level and earn points. You lose points if you lose, obviously, and you gain points if you win. That's how it works. Now, if if I'm a gold player and I beat a bronze player, I'm not going to get as many points. Now, if I'm a bronze player and I beat a platinum player, I'm going to get tons of points to move up in my ranking. You know, so that's going to determine where people are ranked on this giant leaderboard and what what level you're at. And this is good for everybody, man. I'm going to try to be a, a legendary player, top hundred. Uh, but if you want to be a gold player, you want to try to get to diamond next year. You want to try to get to platinum next season. Uh, that's going to be awesome for everybody to strive to move up this leaderboard. I'm super excited about it. Uh, I, I honestly think it's going to be better than weekend league. Barring rewards, I mean, I guess. I don't really play the game for rewards. I don't know how to explain this. I play for, like, the ranking I, I would play for the ranking and trying to get top 100 more than I would play for the rewards. That's just me, though. I'm a super sweat, super nerd, super competitive person. Not everybody's like that. So maybe you guys care more about rewards and things like that. And there goes back to if you just want rewards, maybe you just spam solo seasons. But for me, the online rank mode, trying to get to the top 100 every single season, they're going to update the seasons and refresh the seasons uh, pretty frequently throughout the year as well. So if you did a, you did bad in season one, Maybe now, season two, we're going to refresh. Let's start over. Let's try to get to gold before everybody else does. Let's try to get to legendary before everybody else does. Uh, and there will be a top 100 ranking. So that's pretty much a big deal. And it will change throughout the day. You know, uh, super excited about it, man. Uh, and I, I, like I said, I feel like I just hope, I don't know if you guys do watch Apex, but like when you're that high of a rank, if you're legendary, it should get to the point where you barely gain anything if you win. But if you lose, you lose like, you know, 20 times the amount of points you would get if you won. So for me, uh, it, it is going to vary as far as um, I hope the point system is good. And the one thing, EA, if you watch Apex, they change it every season. So if things aren't working in season one, it's not going that well. Boom, the, the ranking system's a little funky. Season two, they might be able to change it, fix it, so it's getting the way we want, man. As long as we keep putting input, if I have any questions about this ranking system, man, let me know in the comments below. I am super excited about it, man. No more leaderboard where it's just as many people can play as much as you can. You get in the top 100 or something like that. A real all-Madden ranking system. 
that can rank you guys where you play and everybody strive to get to that top 100 legendary in the world and make it mean something again. I think it's important for competitive players, for all you guys, try to get better every single season, get a different rank every single season. I think it's going to change how we play online Madden. And like I said, if you don't want to be in that sweaty environment, you can play solo seasons and go ahead and play the, the Baltimore Ravens with your mutt team. Boom, and earn coins. That's like that. Now, someone asked, is this mode for... I think they're going to have something like this for regs. Uh, I 100% hope there is something like this for regs. Um, don't quote me that 100%, but I, I would say yes. I would go out there and say yes. I know it's going to be there for college regs, okay? And I'm excited about that. College regs 100% is going to have a system like this. So I hope Madden regs has a system like this that I'm super excited about uh, the online ranking system. I know college is going to have one, so... Hopefully, regs will have the same thing. I, I would say yes, but like I said, I'm not sure. Uh, don't quote me on that one. I did play the game, boys. Let me know what you guys, any questions you guys have. I did, like I said, I played Henry probably one game. He was still good. You know, he's still probably going to be good this year. Uh, Jalen Hurts threw a pick the first play. He just overdrew a flat route for a pick six. Was disappointed. Was disappointed. You can still route stem. Henry was running like a deep post. And like a 25-yard in route, it was super hard to guard without getting some pressure. He actually played with the Bears. Uh, and honestly, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Rome Madunze, I could not guard those guys. They were studs. Uh, and we didn't really notice the quarterback not having zip on the ball. Now, this always happens at the beginning of the year. We kind of get used to how no, no velocity abilities are needed in the beginning of the year. And that's how I felt when we were playing. I didn't, I didn't notice the ball being in the air too long. I thought it was really good. I thought... I thought the game played really well. The biggest thing is we didn't really know how to juke in the open field or anything. We didn't know any of the moves. So it was a little bit different in that aspect of it. But uh, all in all, dude, it was fun. It was super exciting. It was super. I'm super, super stoked for college football and Madden 25. This is going to be the best year of football gaming in the history of video gaming, honestly. So, uh, like I said, if you guys have any questions, make sure you comment below. Subscribe. We can hit 80K in a month before college comes out, boys. Um, if you guys need a beta, head on over to my social medias. I'll try to be dropping some of those out. Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, all those links are below. I'll put the link for the Gridiron Notes in the video as well so you guys can head on over there. I'm probably live on Twitch talking about it right now. That link is below as well, boys. College Football 25, Madden 25, absolutely awesome.